Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. Different venue, I know, been here before. Um, today is episode number 562, and the topic today is Do you value yourself based on comparison with others? And I'm going to break that one down. I was actually reading a very interesting article yesterday that inspired this topic, so I'm going to break this one down for you because it might be something that's running in if your life, maybe somebody else's life, and you can maybe help them. Before I jump into that, let me choose myself and what these talks are about. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's the reason, or that's what inspired my talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the, Your Feminine Heart. And that is an everyday commitment I've been doing for the last, well, I started to, over two years ago, but definitely for the last, I'd say, 23 months. 22 months every day and so right now we're at episode number 562 so we're not quite at two years worth of daily broadcast but we're getting close and the topic today on this lovely sunny sun, Saturday afternoon um, is do you compare your, do you compare yourself sorry do you value yourself based on comparing with others and by the way this is an early broadcast than usual if of course this only applies if you're watching live on Facebook because it goes on Facebook Live first, then onto YouTube, and then onto my podcast, and those are more um, after the fact. Anyway, if you're watching live, great. If you're watching the replay, feel free to comment as well, because I do re- I can respond to the comments later on once you uh, interact. So the topic today is more of a, it's not necessarily relationship-centric, because most of my talks are relationship-relative, but it can come up because it can come up in the idea of how you choose your partners. And... I'm going to watch where I want to go with this one because this this applies to me as well. <laughs> so let me be transparent on this. I've definitely um, evaluated myself, I'll use that word, in comparison to other people as less than, so did not qualify myself to be um, deserving of the level of relationship I wanted. Now, maybe you never experienced this. Maybe you have. Maybe you know somebody who has. But, just play along and see if it, and if it does apply to you great if it doesn't it's okay I'm not I'm not making sure that this is not this is not to say you're dealing with this because that's not my assumption that's that, that would be a guess anyway so let's jump into this the challenge we face as human beings if we have any sense of self um, perspe- perception perception rather is that we look at other people and we compare and it's almost a default behavior we have as a human being it seems like most people aren't um, I'm not sure if it was elevated, but certainly detached enough to look at other people and go, they're just different people. So there's no plus or minus when you compare against the opposite gender or the different color skin or a different age or any of those things. But in this culture, we are definitely are evaluated and we're driven by a comparison with against the ideal, which is usually something that's either younger than us, sexier than us, cleaner skin than us, prettier than us, um, better muscles than us, lives in the right neighborhood better than us, has the right car, all these comparisons that we run perpetually and consistently to knock ourselves down. And I'm speaking to myself as well because I've done this more than once. And it's interesting, um, just as a sidebar, a couple of days ago was on Thursday, Wednesday, um, I went, to the t- I went to the Jaguar experience and was taking out all the cars and I was meeting some of the people there. And I did have to meet like two guys who are the senior um, directors of the Jaguar Club of Los Angeles because they had to be there the same time I was. And talking to these guys and hearing like, you know, that he has four cars and he has six cars and they have all these cars, different cars. Part of me is going, I don't have a car at the moment. And I was starting to feel a bit less than. I started to compare myself with these guys who are probably 10, 15 years older than me and probably been doing this for a long time collecting cars. I've had cars and lost cars and given up cars and anyway, that, that stuff. So we've had different paths. But we don't compare paths, we compare results and that's the trap. And so what I want to make sure you get from me today in this little chat is that everybody's journey, everybody's path, everybody's experiences are unique to them. No two people have the same exact experience of life. Even twins, and even a long-term relationship together, 
because of our own internal consciousness and awareness, we'll see things through different lenses. So even if we go through the same physical experiences, our memory of them, our experience of what happened, will be different because of our perspective. Which means that if we compare against anybody, I'll say that again, if we compare against anybody, we're making a mistake. We're making, we actually have an error in approach because you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a, a meme or a quote that's been out there for a while about, you know, um, you can't compare your own journey to somebody else because, um, what is, oh, oh, right, it's, it's like, you can't compare somebody else's, fin you can't compare your, fin your introduction with somebody else's finale, or you can't compare your chapter one with somebody else's chapter 20, meaning that everyone's a different part of the journey, and we're all unique and different, which means the trap we fall into when we do that is an absolutely simple error in approach. It's not a requirement, it's not a rule, it's not a belief that we have to live under that we must compare to other people. It's just we've been trained that way, partly because of the culture we live in. We live in a society, particularly in the Western world, in LA, in America especially, and LA, where there's this personification of ideal. Ideal woman, ideal man, ideal family, ideal look, whatever that is. Well, that ideal is not the average of the population. It's an ideal outside of that um, bell curve that basically makes our ability to enjoy life, if we use that as comparison, painful because we end up coming up short. Because usually there's ideals. First of all, the ideal woman, ideal man are airbrushed, like you wouldn't believe, and photoshopped and lit and all these other things. So they cannot be um, equaled physically. It's not possible because we're all we're independent, we're unique. And in fact, that's what makes us so special, but we don't know that. We don't, we don't remember that. We have this um, false dialogue, monologue inside, saying that when we're looking out there, we're going against that person, oh, they have a nicer car than I, like, well, I mean, oh, sorry, let me speak for myself. <laughs> okay, I'll own up to this. I've definitely been out on the road where I've looked at other people and go, they have a nicer car than I do, or they, they're taller than I, or they're more hair than I do, you know. <laughs> all these different things. So we run this truth. So, hi, Adriana, I see you in my, in my talk, what did you say here? So true, even when we read a book or watch a movie more than once, we have a different perspe perception and experience based on where we are in our lives. Absolutely. And that's the truth about people as well. I know that when I've seen friends, you know, five years from the last time I saw them, the journey we've both been on has been very different. When we come together, do we compare against other people in a negative way? Or do we see that, that we've actually had unique experiences that make us unique and different? but not the same. And the thing about the comparison is you can't compare against difference. You can't compare an apple and an orange as being one better than the other. They're different. And the truth is about the truth is the same for our lives and for our journeys. So when we run this, this I was going to say bullshit, but we run these lies basically about ourselves, about comparison with other people, we end up coming up short. Because maybe, and this is just me, maybe I'm the only one who does that, who runs the belief that, or runs these um, rules against other people, comparing them, going, well, they're better than I am because they have this, 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 and this, whatever that is. Maybe it's more money or a nicer car or a bit of house or the whatever it is. And the reality is, comparison is a trap that requires judgment. And judgment is one of those things that I have been working on myself and I talk about it in my work and I share it with my clients. It's a trap we fall into when we start leveraging that because judgment is a way of using a hammer and chisel to diminish our ego. Sorry, diminish our well-being, not our ego, because the ego is another story. So this, this, this um, nudge, this this chat, is a reminder or a suggestion or an encouragement to look at other people as unique individuals who are interesting and different, and that's it. There's no comparison. There's no judgment, there's no evaluation, whether it's somebody who's homeless, living on the street, or somebody driving in a Bentley or Rolls Royce. Different, that's all. Who knows which is better? Um, using some very r strange examples, but what if somebody who's living, sorry, who's driving around in a, in a Rolls Royce is on their third divorce, dealing with PTSD, on tons of medication, who just, who just lost a child to a drug overdose or something? I'm just throwing a, a, a weird example out there, but what if that's the case? The emotional trial that person's going through, you wouldn't want, with or without the Rolls Royce. Somebody who's living basically on the street may be about to get picked up by a friend of theirs because they were living on the street because their house burned down in the fires last month. 
early this month rather. So they were living on the street just temporarily because they didn't have a place to move into, but the next day it showed up. And now they're actually free and happy and they feel very relieved to be in a place of comfort. We don't know. So this comparison game is all in here. It doesn't make a difference out there in the world. We just carry this false belief somehow that we are the ones that somehow have to change to be better than somebody else because of some rule we're running. So my bottom line of this, my encouragement of my reminder, reminder of this is that truthfully your ability to enjoy life has nothing to do with anybody else. Period. There's no, there's no comparison required, there's no evaluation, there's no judgment, nothing's required at all. So my wish for you is to enjoy your life and enjoy other people who are just driving by in different ways in their lives. Because if they're ahead of you, it doesn't mean anything. Because it's about the different journeys we're on. Because what looks like ahead to you might be way behind for them. You don't know that. So that's one thing. Second thing, because I want to bring back to relationships for a moment, is that we have this tendency, and again, it might be me, <laughs> we have this tendency to compare our relationships against other people's relationships. Romantic relationships, family relationships, all these different things. And I really watch how we start gauging and judging and writing our stories about ourselves based upon inaccurate perceptions of other people. And having seen enough um, dysfunctional relationships, yes, Sherman, and I see German, I see my book, yeah, it's an inside job, absolutely, it's an inside job. Um, seeing enough relationships that look great on the outside but be so destructive internally when I with, work with clients, I'm very clear in saying this, is that you can never compare your relationship or lack of relationship with somebody else's because you have no idea what's going on in their relationship. I've been so many times surprised to discover what somebody was, was going behind the closed doors in that relationship that it wasn't, it wasn't something I would ever want. So that's another comparison you can throw out the window. So my advice to you is if you have comparisons, put them in a little gift packet, tie them up and throw them away. They don't serve you, don't serve anybody else. And definitely, as Sherman said, it is an inside job. So the work for a comparison is rewriting the software inside, basically remembering to love yourself. And I'm going to go back to that again, of course, is the more we love ourselves, the less comparison we do. A lot of times comparison comes from a place of lack and a place of emptiness because we don't feel full, don't feel whole, don't feel filled up. And again, as I've talked about it several times, and it sounds so silly, but self-love, yes, Adriana, no more comparisons. Self-love is an absolute... Um, fundamental tool that changes your life. I've talked about it so many times. I've got my self-love practice that I, that I have my website, which I'll put the link in the comments for so you can check it out. It's a simple tool, but if you do it for a month, it will change everything in your life. It will change your comparisons to be nothing. It will change your judgments to go away because you start to love yourself enough that you feel whole, full, and supported by yourself. That is the inside job I recommend best. Loving yourself, honoring yourself, respecting yourself, supporting yourself so that everything in your life becomes an outpouring of that joyful overflow. If you do that, your life will be forever changed for the better. And other people may compare against you, but that's not your worry. Because <laughs> you'll be done with that. So I think that basically uh, summarizes my talk for today. I'm um, doing it early because I have a social engagement to go to tonight. Um, it's the holiday season, so holiday party tonight. But I want to just quickly put this out there because it's been on my mind since yesterday. You know, I read this article that sort of inspired this talk. And I trust this to be of value to you. Again, I'll put the link in the comments for my self-love practice because it works. And uh, I invite you to look in your own life as your homework, if you wish, at your comparisons to other people. And if you've got too many of them, you might want to get that self-love practice to get started to start diminishing, reducing, or eliminating those comparisons. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, usually 5 p.m. Pacific time. Today was at 3 p.m. because I've got a commitment this afternoon, social engagement. Um, but I want to get this done. But normally 5 p.m. Pacific time, make sure you tag, or actually you watch. In this video, somewhere is a, is a click on the, there's a button you can click. There's a click you can click. There's a button you can click that notifies you when I go live again, which will be tomorrow. Thank you, Sherman. I'm glad, I'm glad it landed, so thank you for the love. Um, so Facebook Live first, then onto YouTube, and then on the podcast, and I'll give you those links in a moment. So if you are watching me on Facebook Live, there should be a button somewhere to say to be notified when I go live again. So if you're interested in following me every day, because I do this every day, Make sure you click on that. So Facebook Live first. On my personal page where I do this live interactive, where other people have been commenting, and then on my business page after that, the archive goes there. You're welcome, Adriana. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your input. Thanks for your love. I appreciate you being here. Um, and so replays. 
business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then after that, I put them onto YouTube. So if you're a YouTube watcher or YouTube viewer watching me there, my channel is Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, or 500 and whatever it is now, 530 something are in there. You can watch them anytime you want. And I'm slowly putting them onto my podcast, which is also called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that. And you can get the audios that way, download it to your phone, your mobile device, wherever you're driving, running, doing things where you can't look at the screen. So with that, um, I hope it's been a value to you. It's definitely something, hey, Deborah. Yes, happy Saturday to you. I'm rocking it out. <laughs> doing it early because I've got a party, a party to go to in about an, about an hour. So I want to get this done early. So thanks for being with me as always. And uh, consider for yourself where your comparisons get in the way and let that change. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.